During the summer of 2023, we moved to a remote Scottish Hebridean island to be its only two residents along with our two pet sheep and pair of cats. These remote islands seem to retain an old-fashioned rhythm and a charm which we find encouraging us to live a more frugal and simple life, the way man was perhaps more intended to. We have an ancient stone cottage to restore, veggies to grow, livestock to build up, fish to catch and smoke, a boat to buy, and much more. Step back in time with us at the Scottish Isle. I have no idea whether the camera is picking that up, but have you seen anything that incredible before? It's stunning. It is. A winter wonderland. This is over on the mainland, where we leave the car. You see the two ruined buildings up there that we've explored before. Well, there's three actually. Everything is, what? Is that a centimetre deep in frost? You can go ice skating on that. Words fail me. Narnia. Look at this tree without the light shining through it and it looks just like a tree. Everything, when you're coming back this way, yeah, just looks normal. So today, finally getting to sort out the ceiling. Um, I've got the dust, we've got the dust sheets. Three of these to cover everything up. Got the paint bushes. Can just show this? Look, 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 by appointment to His Majesty the King. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
So we're basically using the same dust sheets and the same paintbrushes as, as the king. As the king uses when he's doing his ridiculous. Exactly, when he's doing his bit of DIY. Uh, so, I mean, well, the, the first thing to do is to try all these. We spoke about this last time, but can you just come here? He's in his cracks. The broken bits, yeah. We can't, we can't pull them here, if you see this bit here, this has been pulled flat and glued to try and get it, but it's still going to have to be uh, wood filled and, and sanded down. But these pieces, and there's a few more kicking around, just will not pull, they won't pull down anymore. Um, so they've got to be cut out, straightened off, so we can put a screw in them to pull them down, glue them to glue them. them to get them flat uh, but straight away I've just tried doing that with this one and it's working it's worked but yes yeah let's uh let's get some masks and glasses Are you happy with your sheets? Well, you were, you were quite picky about what ones you wanted and didn't want. You see, I've my time with dust sheets was painting and decorating, and Alan's dust sheets were just incredible. They were just all, all like cotton, and massive, and so that's kind of what I've always got in my head with. But everything you look at online was just awful, and. Um, I mean, I guess they'll do the job. They, these, are, these are cotton, but they're covered with something. They look like they're coated in plastic or something. I can't remember. It said that they were covered in something for, I don't know if it's a waterproofing or what. I got, I got frightened then. I thought that was it. I thought, I thought that was the width. <laughs> Oh, it's like, oh, no. you know when you double, triple check everything to make sure you're getting the right thing? Hey, look at the dust in here already. Well, guess what? They're not very thick. There's more dust coming off the dust sheets than there was coming exactly. down. Exactly. I, I agree. I completely <laughs> agree. I'm now going to have some breakfast. Okay. Just to let everybody know, the uh, the reason we're doing the ceiling first is um, I don't think we've still got an active bat colony up there. I don't hear them and I haven't seen any outside, but there was an active bat colony. We know that. And over time, bat guano as it's decomposing becomes more dangerous. So the ceiling is getting sealed to keep everything up there because we have to live here. And then it's getting painted before we finish the walls because the paint splatter is just going to go all over the stone and there's no point in us doing the lovely clean up on it um, and getting paint splattered everywhere. So ceiling first, then walls is what we've decided. And that is that. Well, you better get on with it then. Where are you going? Where are you going? Put the kettle on. I bought a vintage grain mill. I found one. I wanted a, I wanted a vintage one because modern ones are really expensive, so I knew I'd have to go old to get good quality. Um, and a massive sack of wheat berries. I have no idea where I'm going to store them. That was not well thought through. I want to mill my own flour to make bread because it's so much better for you. Nutritionally it's better for you because there are certain 
nutrients that they have to take out of shop-bought flour in order for it to be shelf stable. But um, also, strangely, in the UK, it's a, it's a throwback from, from the war. During the wartime, the Ministry of Food was concerned that we weren't getting, the nation wasn't getting enough calcium and iron in the diet, so they added it into the bread. And that's still a matter of law, that they have to do that. That any, any commercial flour that you buy, any bread that you buy, even wholemeal, uh, it has this blend of added ingredients in them, one of which is a type of iron that's not readily digestible, and the other of which is calcium carbonate, which is chalk, which is not digestible. I don't want to eat that. So, this is the plan. Uh, I guess I'll attach it over here. I got this for cheap online because it's missing some sort of plastic grip where you attach it there, but I reckon these scrap bits of leather will do the job. I once had a very interesting telephone conversation with a milliner who knew the gentleman responsible, the scientist responsible for back in the day for inventing the cocktail of ingredients we have added to our bread in the UK. And he wasn't particularly favourable about it. I think milling, milling your bread is um, more popular in the States. Milling your own, I mean, milling your own grain than it seems to be in the UK. But yeah, apparently very good for you. And I really like the idea of eating grain, eating the sorts of bread our ancestors would have tasted. I've never had, never tasted anything like that before. Apart from when I went to the Cranog Centre once in uh, Perthshire and they had an ancient soup recipe of uh, nettles and barley. It was delicious. There, a good sized hopper too. So I've got three cups of wheat berries and that should yield a good sort of two pound loaf, I think. But first I'm going to just run through a cup worth because this is this cast iron and I don't know if it's ever been used. You're not supposed to wash these, you're supposed to just keep them dry because they'll rust. But yeah, I think I better run some through the mill first to, um, to clean it all through. That needs to be a lot tighter. It's going to be a bit of a fine line, I think. Okay, I've got it now. This sets the, the tension between the two plates and um, how fine the flour comes out. I've probably got it a bit too fine now, so it's, it's hard to turn. Of course, you can get these electric ones of these. There you go. But me being me, I wanted to do it the old-fashioned way. Also, if we ever get a power cut. I can still make bread. The other advantage to making your own flour is that the berries keep indefinitely um, rather than the you know shop-bought flour. They have found wheat berries in uh, the tombs of the pharaohs that they've been able to just plant and grow. Cool. I 
say that's sufficient to uh, to sacrifice to um, clean the thing out. Take long. This is going to take like five minutes, I reckon. The other advantage to doing it this way is that the flour comes out slightly warm, which is going to be great for the yeast. Okay, so three cups of berries yielded just over five cups of flour. This is extremely wholemeal and I never have much luck with wholemeal bread to be honest, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. So first step is to wake up the yeast. warmed the bowl as well. This is all of the water that I'll need and so I'm going to leave this to sit and bubble and wake up for half an hour and then I'll come back to it and add the remainder of the flour. I've got too much but I don't want to waste it so I think I'll make some little fat dough balls for the birds or something like that. It's actually taken more like an hour for the yeast to start bubbling. See the little that bubbles on top? That's ready now to make into a bread dough. So I'm going to add the flour and start beating. oil, honey and salt. Totally different process using freshly milled flour, so I read, to uh, how I would conventionally do it. Everyone online's got different tips on how best to make the dough. It's a very, very sticky dough so far. But you don't want to add too much flour and you don't want to over knead it. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. All right, I've added as much flour as I dare. I don't know if this is right or not. Look how stringy it is. Surely that's a good sign. What's that, gluten or protein? Oh, same thing, isn't it? Anyway, um, I'm going to shape this and prove it just once and hopefully it'll rise, <laughs> we'll see.
think it's probably too sticky. Don't add too much water, don't add too little water, don't add too much flour, certainly don't add too little flour. Don't prove it too long, don't prove it too short. Whatever you do, don't score it with a blade before you put it in the oven. It's going in a really hot oven for four minutes and then down to normal temperature for another half hour. I'll spare you the obligatory shot of it going in the oven. As you can see behind me, I'm on the, uh, the main island of the three that are directly outside the house, the bigger and the higher of the three. It's quite cold over here, but then you're further out to sea, so the wind's just blowing across. But for some reason it was easier to get across, it wasn't as uh, muddy, 
silty as it usually is. And I've never been over here before. This is the first time. I can't say there's much to see, but it's nice to get this view of the house that I've never had before. So let me just flip the camera around and uh, show you around. There's a lot of felled pine. That's uh, never been collected and used, which annoys me, because it would have been the perfect uh, firewood at one point. It could still be used now, but it's not enough. There's, not, there's no point really. There's, uh, there's plenty of wood over there. So obviously you get a different view. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. Get a closer view of the boat. This is the easiest way to get up and down here from the point of view of getting actually on the island. But the, uh, the quayside that's been built is covered in seaweed and you can't walk on it. So the access is to this point is treacherous. I had to get on uh, basically adjacent to this point on the other side of the island. Getting down is going to be a problem, but hey ho. I don't know if you can see down there, but there's an old mooring chain in the sea. I'm going to come back and get that at some point. Bit of magnet fishing. So yeah, as I said, there's not really that much to see. Just go over here and give you a, a look at the, the view as the sun's coming up over the mainland. That's a bit of a view. Good evening. Hello. Would you like to sample some freshly milled flour, wholemeal, super lovely bread? Can I go and feed the sheep first? No. Okay, what am I cutting this? Yeah, just just cut it in the middle like a Viking. <laughs> it rolls better than I thought. 
What's the crumb like? I bet Gordon Ramsay doesn't have these problems. Or, or like Jamie Oliver. <laughs> what are you looking at like that for? Are you, uh Worried? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you look like. I've never done it before. Well... Does it need longer in the oven? Well, I don't know I'm going to tell you. I cooked it for longer than uh, I was supposed to. Oh no, you just ate on camera. Yeah. Needs longer in the oven? Yep. It's, uh It's tasty, but it's got the consistency of cake. Well, let's try an end bit. What? What's the flavour like? Different than normal bread? Yeah, it's much sweeter. Is it? There's nothing wrong with the taste, but if you're asking me to be truthful, yeah, it needs... It's, I mean, it tastes really nice. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Mm. It is sweeter. It, it tastes... It kind of tastes wholesome. It is. But not as empty wholesome as wholemeal bread that you buy. As you know, I toast nearly all of my bread, don't I? Mm. Before I eat it. I even have toasted sandwiches. Um, it's nutty. Yeah. It's nutty and it's sweet. Um, you know, it, uh, getting back to the toasting thing, what I'm saying is, if it's toasted, it's going to be absolutely fine. But I think this particular batch, right in the middle where I cut it, it just needed a bit longer in the oven. Well, if I'm going to be making this all the time, I'm afraid you're going to have to buy me a countertop mixer because I don't want biceps like Popeye. You've already got them and the tattoos. <laughs> no, no. Oh. What's a Popeye thing? I have no idea. I don't know, the bar can't, can't even remember. You must have one. Want to go and look it up? It is, isn't it? It's like I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. Do -do. That's the end of it. Mm-hmm. Well, it is, it is extremely tasty. Good. I'm strong to the finish, cause I eat big finish. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs>